Hey folks, I'm Greg Zestchuk from The Beer Diaries. I am here talking to you about Pliny the Elder. We've been debating a little bit of what to call it, Pliny versus Pliny, but we have what is considered one of the most epic beers around. Uh, I'm joined by Brady, of course, of The Beer Diaries, and James from London. James is having slight technical difficulties, but he's going to be on here, and he is uh, drinking a double IPA from over the pond because, as folks may well know, uh, Pliny is almost impossible to get outside California, apparently Colorado, a little bit, and maybe Oregon. So at the end of the day, uh, we are in Canada drinking this. So Brady and I have 38-day uh, bottles, the year old bottles. Brady, is that about right? No, the math is about right, I'd say. A month and, so and a we, month and a week, yeah, so yeah, sure. Yeah, we have the great fortune of uh, having this drinking this in Canada, which is probably a rarity, I think. Perhaps very few people uh, have these, but we were very fortunate in the Beer Diaries because we have connections to get beer, which is as well. It's actually me carrying it across borders, but that's how it works sometimes. So why don't we uh, – we'll start by our opening. I think, James, have you already opened your beer? I, I suspect you may have because you said you were already drinking it. Uh, no, no, I've, I've just uh, just taken the cap off mine. All right, so we'll do a pour in a moment here. So I'll try not to make a giant spill. Um, one of the things to consider, uh, of course, is glassware. And double IPA actually has a pretty wide range. Um, Brady's doing a pint. Um, you can do a pint shake. Yeah, uh, American stuff. Yeah, that, that's one of the ways you can do it. Uh, certainly, I mean, and some some of the sites will say actually even a uh, tall, big wine glass, often the snifter as well. I, I went for a tulip. <laughs> so I, I like the big, big sort of fragrant beers in a tulip so I can stick my nose right in there. Um, so I, I understand the, getting getting the aroma corral like that is a good idea. Uh, I just have sort of a bias since I first learned about these things in some nice uh, Washington uh, State pubs, and they always poured them in these things. <laughs> so I was I yeah, continue to do that. Because, yeah. There's nothing nothing matters. I mean, really, what what matters is a great beer in the glass. That's what we have today. So let's pour it out there. Try and make sure again. Always you want to have a nice nice head on it, and then um, as I've said before, the the, the general order. It's, you know, you pour it and then really sniff it very early in the process. You want to get real good. Whew. This heavenly. I can, I, I can smell this, you know, right now. It smells like it smells better than most other IPAs at this distance. Yeah, it's kind of amazing you can smell it from two feet away or a foot away. Um, <laughs> not many, not many uh, offerings are like that, but uh, this one definitely is. Yeah, so definitely to get some sniff off the nose there. Um, James, you said you're drinking a uh, English interpretation of an American double IPA called Ageless. Uh, lots of big hops on the nose, pretty powerful beer. What would you say about yours? Oh, definitely. I'm getting a, a huge amount of flavor just on the nose there. Um, so very citrusy notes I'm picking up here, a little bit of bready, malty uh, character as well. Yeah, that's, that's a good sign of a, a good double IPA, especially. They need a lot of malt to balance out the... Uh, about the big, you know, the big hops profile to give it to give it some good balance. So, um, first thing we do, obviously, we look at it. Um, my head is sticking around. Sign of a good gla clean glass. Sign of a good beer. Brady, what's yours looking like? You have a nice, uh, nice fine head on that one. Oh well, yeah, I tried to keep it limited, but it still desists on creating like three or four <laughs> fingers of really, really puffy, just cushiony goodness. Yes, indeed. So no, now, like, you know. obviously, we can take a look at this. And one of the cool things to look, again look at: nice and clear copper, golden color. Um, you know, a little bit of carbonation there, not a whole lot, but definitely a nice head hanging out there with some lacing coming down the glass. Um, and after taking another look, take another good sniff. I mean, it may not be quite as intense as that first pour. Uh, what do you what do you smell there, Brady? What's your what's your magic nose? Oh, it's still pretty powerful. It's still like big tropical fruits, more you know pedestrian grapefruit and. Uh, in um, orange cream sort of uh, bitterness, uh, and then a nice, uh, nice maltiness. You know, caramel, toffee. Yeah, kind of elder leaves. Also, uh, some nice, nice um, piney, junipery elements too. I find yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. The, the forest floor, kind of sort of uh, you know astringency, but in a good way. <laughs> yes, yes. How about the way? And I think it sound like. James is a pretty powerful, similar thing with his his age list, and so why don't we uh, we why don't we move all the way to the tasting part? This is of course one of the highlights. Uh, when we taste, obviously, we we think of what what the flavors. You know, I always think of it initially with the sort of hops flavors like, and then through the middle, and think about the finish, and then also make sure you think about uh, how it sits on your tongue. Like, uh, is it heavy? Is it light? Is it oily? Is it does it buzz the tongue with a lot of carbonation? Um, those are all the things to think of while you're tasting it. So let's uh, go for some sips here of this. What is the 
We'll talk a little bit more about the beer after we have a few sips, but we'll, uh, let's begin. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> what say you, Mr. Brady? I'm just taking it all in right now. It's it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's very similar to the nose. Uh, all everything was promised was uh, delivered on. I can't you can't argue with that. Same tropical uh, fruit and, and grapefruit and other fruits. <laughs> uh, maybe a little mango even, but it's it's still fruity. And then then the pine bitterness sort of cuts through it. All kept underneath, kept you know lifted by that nice uh, bready caramel. Coffee character. Yeah, it's just it's balanced. Kind of being, balanced. Yeah, so so balanced. I mean, I think I think the sort of the power of the of the hops is really counterbalanced so nicely by the malt. I mean, you, you read online this is apparently about 100 IBU international bittering units beer, so really big bitterness, but it, it it's very flavorful, you know, very balanced. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't doesn't cut your teeth. Doesn't it doesn't really it's it's really smooth and and. and Yin and yang, all, all, all in order. Mm. Yeah. And James, you're drinking a, uh, as we said, a different double IPA over from England. Um, what do you, did it end up tasting approximately like what you thought it would after the nose, or how did it end up working for you? I think mine's slightly different. I'm, I'm getting a very strong sort of bitter sourness from the pine, um, slightly less of the tropical fruits you're picking up. Maybe, right. maybe a little citrus fruit, but nowhere near the levels that you seem to be getting. Yeah, I think that again. That's a characteristic of, of you know certain of the hops. This one, I think it's Amarillo, Simcoe, Centennial, CTZ. I had a cheat sheet over here, CTZ for for in Canada. But you know, big big hops. Also, another thing, I've been reading a little bit about how it's made. It's uh, a lot of late additions, and what late additions are is you know fresh hops being added to you know the serving vessel, the cask, the fermenter. Like you know, hops late in the process to give you that very very fragrant and and sort of upfront. Um, flavor, but less bitterness in a way. Um, so that's so the one you, you maybe you may be experiencing, um, James, was a, an IPA with a lot of bittering hops that maybe doesn't have quite the balance of this one. And that you know, there's a reason why this is. I think I just checked about the you know number number three the double IPA uh, and number two double IPA on uh, beer advocate rate beer. So pretty spectacular. Um, I mean, I, I had a look earlier, and uh, I I think Pliny the Elder and Pliny the Younger occupy one and two. Uh, the score up around 100, and I'm, I'm down at 92, unfortunately. Uh, oh, no, only 92. <laughs> yeah, only 92. That's rough, but it's still probably pretty tasty. So, um, mouthfeel, I mean, I think, so once we think about the flavor, I mean, again, you get this really nice enduring, these type of beers um, t tend to sit on the back of the palate, and you, you tend to sort of continue to have a lot of the hop characteristics. Just, I mean, I find it with this one, again, a little bit of the malt. What, what, do, you, what do you feel with this one there, there Brady? Sort of, sort of my problem when you're trying to get, you know, go for a pure, smooth, silky body in an IPA, especially a double IPA, it just ain't gonna happen. I mean, the the hops linger, as you say, and it's a lovely thing, but it's just it it counteracts smoothness. So you you kind of have to accept the fact that it's gonna be a little catchy, a little bit of a, a little bit of a burr there when you're when you're trying to contemplate smoothness. This isn't my Budweiser. This has got uh, this has got a nice hoppy you know, thoroughness to it. Yes, I mean it's it's, all, it's also kind of medium bodied. It's certainly not light and certainly not overly heavy. It's it's a nice medium body, kind yeah, of a, that, that, a little lower true. carbonation. Like you know, I think we put we drop when you pour the beer, you get a lot of carbonation out if you really pour a big head. But a little lower, a little car, but not low by any stretch. A little lower, like it's there. It's just a little frothy, but it's nothing nothing uh, prickly. That's a nice thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that would actually probably enhance the sort of that feeling of bitterness, the, car the carbon dioxide on the tongue kind of gives you back pepper kind of kind of feel. Um, it just kind of kind of warms a bit too. I mean, it's got eight percent alcohol. It's it's kind of uh, it's not it's not obvious, but it kind of kind of tingles at the end a little bit of warmth that uh, it should. Yeah. So you know what you're drinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a little bit. I, I would totally agree with you there. Um, but pretty 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 integrated though. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. I mean, a couple things more things about this beer. Um, Number one, uh, named after famous uh, philosopher, naturalist, uh, Roman uh, Pliny or Pliny, the elder. We'll, we'll let the internet tell us what it, what it is. Uh, I don't know my Latin, but uh, at, the end of, at the end of the day, uh, you know, he actually uh, was the one who actually first observed hops and named them. Uh, I think it was Lupulus Sacralitus or something of that sort. And there was later, of course, Humulus Lupus uh, later, but he was one of the first ones to observe it. 
Uh, and he's well known for actually having died in the uh, while well, observing the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, as as observed by his yep. nephew Pliny the Younger. And so, you know, real real interesting case there. And this beer, um, you know, among beer nerds, it's kind of one of the most highly sought after. So folks will trade for this and um, chase this to the ends Indeed. of the earth. This beer. <laughs> and and mm. Greg, you've had it before, I believe. Uh, yeah, I. I, I, I <laughs> I oh, wait, yeah, I think it was a Christmas movie. gift. That's right. I think it was a Christmas gift, yeah. So I, I, I thought that was the one and only time, but apparently uh, lightning strike twice, so uh, lucky man. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, great, great beer. And James, any any uh, thoughts or words on your beer? Any uh, observations? Any final kind of conclusions, what you think of yours? I, I'm quite enjoying mine. I mean, I, my, I, I'm getting a lot of pine notes. I'd say that's the, the overriding flavor I'm picking up here, which is slightly disappointing in a way. It's, it's a fairly one-dimensional taste. Um, but no, I, I enjoy it, but I'd say nothing more than that. <laughs> Being over there, over the pond, is probably really difficult, I suspect. Ah, uh, yes. I mean, I've, I've got a fantastic um, local shop that I go to, and they said that it's it's not only impossible unless you have a very good friend who uh, who's traveling back and forth between the states and here. So James, are you getting? A, uh, I'm looking at the other uh, this this Mancunian uh, brewery you're talking about here. Uh, the, the reviews I see talk about a lot of strong yeasty character. Is, you, is that part of uh, your experience? I mean, I think it's there. I, I I don't think it's the standout characteristic. The pine is really really punchy. I mean, well, um, that, that, that's that's good. Which is yeah, it's I, I've never had something with this sort of strong. It's it's not all, it's bitter, but it's also got this sort of floral characteristic to it as well. It's really nice. Um, but I think yeah, the maybe the yeast is hidden in sort of a malty, bready flavour. Yeah. Well, so um, yeah, I mean, not much else left. I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, we are drinking a delicious beer. If you ever see this beer in a store, you have to buy it. Uh, and typically, most stores will only let you buy one. If you find a store that lets you buy two, buy two. And so you uh, you can you can trade it. It's just uh, it's a very simple rule of this beer. I had one time where I, I could have had it. It was a uh, rather a uh, long evening spent in Seattle a couple of years ago, where I actually came across it in a bar, uh, and I had the good sense at the time to avoid paying twenty dollars or whatever it was for the bottle, because well, at that point in time, I <laughs> wouldn't have appreciated it, shall we say? Right, right. I, right. I, I keep it myself, but uh, probably was the best thing to do. So. Uh, yeah, so don't always buy it when you come across it, but well, uh, if, if you're if you're in a safe position, you should buy it. I think it's maybe a yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, James, I forgot to ask one important question, which is the usual. You're fine with us using your voice and picture on this broadcast, correct? Uh, yes, absolutely. All right, yeah, that's uh, that's one of those last kind of things. I'm also going to do something a little funny here, which I'm going to take a picture and put it up on Instagram. So the Beer Diaries has an Instagram account called the Beer Diaries. So I'm going to sit back and take a funny picture of me doing this. With Pliny or Pliny, we will beg to differ or decide. And I will put this up on the interwebs later because it's kind of a novel thing. And I want to thank you guys for being on here. Uh, thank the folks for viewing. We have one viewer today. Of course, Sunday afternoon, folks have lots to do, but uh, check this out online. Uh, if you like what you see, subscribe. We're going to do this more often. I think uh, you know, we're going to be trying to take epic beers and drink them and share our thoughts of them with you. Uh, this is a great beer. You must have it. Uh, final thoughts, anyone? Uh, Brady, what are your final thoughts? I'm always glad to, always, you know, I always will be glad to just try a beer of this stature and of this quality. Um, sometimes, though, rarity tastes good, and I, this, um, this kind of falls in that category, but it's still a, it's a stellar, stellar uh, Imperial IPA. It is. Um, so you, as we said before, if you can get your hands on it, don't hesitate. And James, thoughts from London? I think my, my overriding thought is absolute jealousy and envy <laughs> of being able to, uh, or not being able to join in drinking such a fantastic beer, but uh, nonetheless, for, for those, those of us over the pond, Ageless Double IPA by Red Willow is a very tasty brew. I think, yeah. um, maybe not to the same class, but nonetheless tasty. Very good. And I think, you know, obviously, uh, folks looking for this beer, San Francisco and Aries is your best bet. And then the further f further you go from that, it gets a little trickier. But highly recommend y'all check it out. So thanks very much. From the Beer Diaries, cheers. Slancha, Nazdrovia, Nazdrovi. Is that right, Brady? 
Pure health, yeah. Pure well, health. that's what I mean. But this isn't Czech, so let's just go with good old American cheers. Cheers. Sorry, in cheers. English. In yes. English, my, my apologies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. It says English first. We stole it. Yeah, 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 yeah I know. I know. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Pure health. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye.